In this video, we continue looking at the conduit looping method, a method of wiring lighting circuits that uses PVC single insulated conductors, minimum of 1.5 mm squared when wiring lighting circuits, and the conductors themselves are stranded to give the conductors greater flexibility when being pulled into either a conduit or trunking system. And we know because they're single insulated cables, we can take them exactly where we need them to go. So this method varies from the three plate and two plate method, which I've looked at in other wiring diagrams and fixed installations throughout the channel. I've also wired within a conduit system and explained this conduit looping method when pulling cables in and terminating them. We're looking at in this series of videos, the diagrams that can help us wiring conduit. With that in mind, this here is downloadable from a link within the description, and we've been working our way through this booklet. So let's just have a look at what that booklet can offer you. So an overview of wiring in PVC singles on the front, followed by some circuit diagrams that we've produced. So we've produced circuit diagrams of one-way switching of a light, two-way switching of a light, and two-way and intermediate. So this one here will be very handy when working on today's circuit diagram. From that, we've gone on to look at a rig you can build either at college or at home. And I recommend people that are watching these videos are using these probably as a pre-teach before their lessons or as a catch-up for lessons that they've missed. So again, if you wanted to build this, I would build it in plastic conduit and we had a number of lighting points suggested as well as switching points. And we worked our way through stages one to six producing wiring diagrams that can help us pull the cables into this system. On the back of that, we've also got some test result sheets. So the test result sheets are available if you want to test them. And again, there are videos on the channel showing you how to test lighting circuits that are wired in a conduit system. So using the conduit looping method. There's a marking criteria, as well as some diagrams that we've worked through. So we've done this one. We're going to be working on this one today. And then the one that we've probably made the most use of is the final one in the pack just here because that's the layout that I'd expect you to build. So we've got three lighting points and say four switches, and we've done wiring diagrams to help you produce those circuits that are in there. So if we look at those, they start off quite simple. We do some simple and more complicated circuits. You can see that's quite a complicated circuit, explaining where all the conductors go in relationship to the lighting points. So we've been busy in this series of videos, and I recommend if you're jumping in at this stage, it may be worth going back and watching some of the other videos. This, however, because it is a circuit diagram and we've talked about wiring diagrams, you can actually use this circuit diagram to help you wire the circuit, but there are some things to consider. So if we look at our two-way and intermediate switches and I bring them in, the problem being is that actually for the drawing, they are side on. So if I turn this one over, you can see that we've got our switch on the side on position and it would be in real terms that way around. So it's important that when we turn our switches round and we're thinking about using it as a wiring diagram, that we consider where the conductors were going in the side position in relationship to its proper position. So to lay those down, we've got a common terminal, L1 and L2, our four terminals in our intermediate switch, L1 and L2, and our common, and that's the arrangement that we're gonna have. So while you're thinking, well, why is Gaz making me do this one when I've already done an intermediate switch? So if I pull the wiring diagram back in, so that's a circuit diagram. So we've got a circuit diagram here for two-way and intermediate, and we've done a wiring diagram as well of it. The difference being I've added an extra lamp, and that can confuse some people because the lamp that's last in circuit, so you might have six lights, the last one will only have one neutral and one switching line. And when you have to add the details onto a circuit diagram, sometimes you make one have two neutrals and one switch line, and two switch line and one neutral, because of the way the diagram is laid out. So I just want to just clear that up for my students. We're not going to put the CPC on it. We never do on our circuit diagrams that I've produced. So I won't be using my green pen. The CPC needs to take the logical route. And we've talked about that when we did other wiring diagrams. So again, if you haven't watched previous videos in the series, go back and check those out. So we're going to come from a consumer unit, our line conductor, from a consumer unit, our neutral conductor, but we've also said it could come from other areas as well, like another switch and another light for those conductors. We've mentioned it previously. So this is as if it's coming out of the consumer unit. So if we we're gonna do our brown line conductor, I'm gonna take it from the consumer unit, I'm gonna pass it through the symbol which is there for a fuse. That is not the symbol for a circuit breaker. If you were gonna have a circuit breaker symbol, it's completely different. 
It looks a lot like a set of headphones to me. So that's the symbol there for a circuit breaker. So just bear that one in mind that we've not got a circuit breaker. It might be shown, if I just draw it again, with it just over the top like that as well. So it looks like a set of headphones. So just be careful when looking at that symbol that we actually know that that is a symbol effectively for a fuse. But if we had a circuit breaker on our distribution board or consumer unit, the symbol is different on a drawing. So from the consumer unit, we bring our line conductor into common of our first switch. Then we come out of our terminals L1 and L2 and across to our intermediate switch. Because we're using PVC singles, because we're using PVC singles, we know that we have to choose the correct color. So we don't need to choose black, gray, etc. We can just use brown for all of these. And we've seen in other wiring diagrams and circuit diagrams where we did the two plate and three plate method, we had to keep putting brown sleeving on conductors because they weren't brown. But we can do all of these conductors for switching line conductors and strappers, etc., in brown. So we come out of our switch, our two-way switch, and we come across to our intermediate with two cables, like so, both brown. So we're coming out of L1 and L2, doesn't matter which way around they are, and we're coming into our intermediate switch. Now this is the bit where care needs to be taken if you're going to use it as a wiring diagram. If I came into these two here, okay, from L1 and L2, remember that would either be the bottom two, and it wouldn't have mattered if it was the top two, but it certainly isn't across the sides. Now it looks as if it's across the sides here for the way it comes in, but remember we've rotated our switch, so it's actually coming in either the top two or the bottom two. And that's a mistake often made by students that use this as a wiring diagram. So remember, our switches would be that way around L1 and L2, either into the bottom two or the top two. And that's exactly what the diagram shows you, but what you've got to remember is their side on. Then out of our intermediate switch, either the bottom two or the top two, we're gonna come across to our L1 and L2 of our second two-way switch. Hopefully you're using a ruler as I bring my conductors across, like so, and we can see that we've come out of here and we've come across to our two-way switch. So again, out of either the bottom two or the top two, into L1 and L2 of our second two-way switch. Now all we've got to do is come out of common and the common goes to the lamp. Well, logically here, so if I'm gonna do this first, this common's gonna go straight to this lamp. It's the nearest one for the circuit diagram we're looking at. So let's bring that across, making sure I hit the omega symbol. I'm just there, make sure you hit it in the right place. Ignoring the position of the intermediate switch, we'll talk about how it does it across the strappers, so it goes across that way diagonally. Okay, we'll explain that in a separate video. Let's work out if this lamp would have a switching line on here. So the line comes through my overcurrent protection device into common. It comes down this blade of the switch. Let's imagine this is in a position where it comes through. It comes to here, and we can see that our lamp would have a switching line this side. In order to get it to illuminate, we'd obviously need a neutral on the other side. If we ignore this switch, how do we turn it off? If I change the blade position up here, so it comes up through the blade moved into this position through here, we can see that this one now is not closed, so obviously the lamp would not have a switching line here. And if there was a neutral on the other side, it wouldn't illuminate. We'll look at the intermediate switch. It, it goes across the diagonal. It shorts both of them across the diagonal, so it's either open or shorted across. But it probably needs a separate video explaining the intermediate switch in a little bit more detail, maybe even when taken apart. Let's do the neutral next, okay? Rather than carrying on with our line conductors, let's do the neutral next. So our neutral here in our consumer unit shows a picture of a neutral link. And we're just gonna bring it there through using your rule. And I'm gonna bring it up here. The tendency now for my learners is to drop the neutral here at the first lamp and then come up to here. If I was to do that, I'd obviously have two neutrals here and only one neutral here. I'd have to come out of here down to here, making this two switching lines and one switching line here. That's the mistake we make. We're gonna make this one the last one on the circuit. So we're gonna bring this all the way up and we're gonna kick it into the neutral connection there. So we've got this lamp currently working through our switching system two-way and intermediate. I want two lighting points to come onto it. So I'm gonna to need to bring a switching line down to this one and a neutral down to this one in order that we've got an extra lamp. We could continue the process on for as many lamps as you want. There could be LED down lights, there could be anything. So I'm gonna kick one out the omega symbol here, like so, bring down my blue and bring my neutral into the omega symbol just there. 
So we can see that one's connected and we take out our switching line conductor, we kick one down, bring it down and across. So hopefully now you can see that we've actually got, this is our first lighting point that comes on with this one at the same time, but logic tells me that this is the last point on the circuit. And that's why this circuit diagram was left in here was because we kept making a mistake when drawing it with two neutrals here and only one switching line because we tended to drop the neutral off first. I hope that makes some a sense to you. It also was used as an EAL assess piece where you had three switches controlling two lights in a steel conduit exercise. So again, that's something to be familiar with. It's worth noting that these are lamps. A lighting point can sometimes look different. So if I draw a lighting point up here, sometimes they show a lighting point as a circle with a cross inside it. We've got our picture for a neutral link, a symbol for a fuse. I've got a switch here being a two-way switch as well. So some of the symbols are helpful for exams. The circuit diagram is helpful for assessment pieces and it builds on all the knowledge that we've acquired. I'll continue on this series of videos um, on the conduit looping method with other videos, but make sure you've watched them all in sequence in order to build that learning up and I'll add more into it in the future. But for the time being, this circuit diagram here completes the pack that was downloadable in the link in the description, which I may come back to and add some more variations of conduit lighting circuits in the future. But that completes this pack for you as far as I'm concerned for the videos. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.